Hi, my name is Eric Levine, and I am the president and CEO of Cooper Reese. We are a primary mental health residential and day treatment program in Western North Carolina. Can you tell me about your program for those with special needs? Well, special needs is a, is a big category. You know, I spent most of my career as a special educator working with children and adolescents with emotional, emotional and behavioral disorders, learning disabilities, and um, kids on the spectrum. Uh, here at Cooper Reese, we work with people with a, primarily with mental health issues. Um, many of them have were probably identified early on as people with special needs as well. Now, what should parents know about mental health and individuals that are on the spectrum? Well, it's complicated. Um, I think we're looking at at autism now as the spectrum disorder that it is. And I think that it varies depending upon the person. I think when it comes to neurodiversity and we use the term neurodiversity pretty much interchangeably uh, these days when we're talking about the spectrum of issues uh, that people can bring to the table. Uh, here at Cooper Reese, again, we work primarily with folks with mental health needs, but we also work with folks that come in who have also had a history of maybe um, some level one autism as well. So primarily issues related to social skills and ex executive functioning and some minor sensory issues. How do you really see anxiety and depression in the special needs population? I mean, what are the signs to watch out for as parents may either not recognize them or actual signs or will maybe attempt to downplay them? I think anxiety is inextricably woven into the fabric of folks who are having um, mental health problems. I mean, it often dovetails and works together with it. I think when you're talking about kids, you know, we're talking about the special ed system. We're talking about a, a pretty onerous process to have someone properly identified and receive the services they need. And usually underneath the experience of having a, an educational disability, if you will, is, is anxiety and depression. So I think they're all woven together. When do people typically come to Cooper Reese? Is it after they seek other therapy or is it typically uh, direct communication? Typically, people come to Cooper Reese after they have tried other less restrictive, if you will, interventions. A lot of the folks that we serve, you're talking about, we serve people from 18 and up, average ages at Cooper Reese's mid-20s. Many of the people we serve have had multiple psychiatric hospitalizations or have had other experiences in residential treatment. And, there, and when you come to Cooper Reese, especially our farm program, you're looking for a longer term experience. So what steps, what would be the first steps for a family to do if they're concerned? Perhaps they see some of the signs that you mentioned. I think they should be working with a treatment team, uh, working with a therapist in the community. If your child is still in school, you should work with your, your local school to identify if there's any kind of educational impact going on. And if that is true, start a formal process, which begins with an assessment. The minute a parent notifies a school system that they are suspicious that there's an educational disability impacting the child's ability to perform in school. The school is therefore on notice to begin a process to evaluate that child. So I think at the core of all of this is evaluation and assessment. And if someone wants to find out more information about Cooper Reese, what's the best way to do that? They can go to the website and contact us through that. You can write an email to me. I'm happy to respond. My email is eric.levine at cooperreese.org. Um, happy to help. Happy to talk to anybody.